Let's do a test run. Uh, I'll do a, like a little intro and and then we just can just talk, I guess. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna clap these so it makes a um, sound. Okay. Hopefully, it makes a spike on our audio. Uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Hey, I'm Andrew, the bearded giant, and I am Gary, the bearded woodworker. And we're trying to record something on Zoom because we're playing around with the idea of doing a podcast. So we are strictly experimenting with technology. Yes. And we've been experimenting with technology for a little bit because we're both YouTube content creators. That's true. Yes. We, uh, Gary has more experience. I guess he's on this side of me. He has more experience making videos than I do, but we're both YouTube creators. And uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Gary was up at my house. Uh, if, you, if you guys didn't know, uh, Gary and I are brother-in-law. Uh, he married my sister, and so uh, we're family. So anyway, Gary was at my house. Uh, and we were uh, taking down a tree in my front yard. And uh, during that process, Gary came up, I think it was you who talked about the idea of doing a podcast. I and brought up the subject that you had talked about a year and a half or so ago. Yeah. 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 So we revisited it. Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, about a year and a half or so ago, I suggested a podcast more to support Gary and his YouTube channel. And we toyed with the idea, but it didn't go anywhere. But this, a couple of weeks ago when he was up here, we thought, hey, let's give it a shot. So we're uh, playing around with it right now. Uh, so <clears throat> we, we toyed with the idea of discussing uh, being a maker, discussing uh, our experiences as content creators, uh, discussing uh, projects we're working on that dovetail into our YouTube channels and uh, have a little fun and, uh, exp and play around with a format that uh, we haven't necessarily done, but is similar to what we're doing now. Yes, agreed. Agreed. We've also talked about <clears throat> trying to put together some sort of format on maybe each show would be kind of the same with different subjects. Talk about having a little what you're working on minute, have a little bit who you've been watching minute kind of thing, and maybe just have a, uh, a topic to discuss for the, the show, whether it's uh, creative or, or, or tools or how do you do this or what do you think about that kind of thing yeah like a like uh one category what gary alluded to uh, uh a tool minute or a tool time minute or some something where we we highlight a uh, a tool that we each use or one of us uses or one of us would like to use and we just discuss uh the benefits and drawbacks or or whatever we, we discuss that tool or uh, we talk about uh, uh, upcoming video we have coming up or uh, some past videos we have. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> as an audio medium, me pointing at the camera probably doesn't come across very well. <laughs> Especially if you're just listening to audio, you're not going to be able to hear the pointing, but... Uh... <laughs> We are thinking about uh, doing uh, an audio-only podcast and also a video podcast, which we will both um, edit ourselves and upload onto our own videos, correct? Yeah. So uh, doing a collaboration podcast uh, so we become partners on the audio uh, format, 
and then we take uh, individual audio files and edit them for our own use. Uh, since we're, we're both creating this at the same time, uh, I give you permission to use my half of the video, <laughs> however you please. Sweet. <laughs> Do I have to reply? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can use my video. Uh, Almost however you please, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, so speaking of that weekend, Andrew, where we took down that big old tree, the the tree that was way bigger than I remember it being. How are things now? Are they still in place, or have you moved some stuff? Bucked some firewood? Did some? So, yeah. Up? I have done minimal work on that. I took my truck and pushed the end of the large log that's laying down over closer to the fence so I could park my truck. Ah, okay. Uh, where the I saw a picture that you sent me of the yeah. truck and I was trying to grasp what happened here. Yeah. Uh, and I've picked up some of the miscellaneous wood and moved it into a, a pile. And I have actually swept my driveway um, and the where I store my firewood uh, in preparation for splitting and cutting that 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 wood that's down. Nice, good. But the large log, uh, uh, I plan on uh, milling with a Alaska ch Alaska chainsaw mill, uh, specifically a Grandberg mill. Um, which might make a very nice uh, tool talk uh, when we officially do a podcast, since this is just a test run. Yes, yes, true. And you'd use your uh, three foot bar, your 36 inch bar, is that? Uh, <laughs> the, the base of that log is wide enough that I probably would use the 60 inch bar. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, a little bigger than I remember. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> So, and, and, and it, it V's out. And so what I want to do is cut it so I can get the widest se section of the V and make a table. And I think that has some interesting slabs. So you want to keep the crotch yeah. in that slab? I do, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, and I'd be more than happy to share a piece or two of that with you. Oh, I'll be happy to accept that sharingness of yours. <laughs> I have, uh, I, I took some video and I'm going to put together a video for, uh, of that, that tree coming down, which includes us erecting scaffolding that was 20 feet tall. Easy, yeah. Or, or yeah. more, like we, no yeah. wait, we, we had one nine, di one nine, nine, one, one six disc and one four disc. Right, we didn't do two. Yeah, so ten, 10 and eight. Oh, eight. Yeah. Uh, eight, eighteen feet. I think is what we did. Plus a little bit of jack space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're nineteen-ish feet. Yeah. Yeah, and it worked for. I mean, it was it was a good plan. Plus two discs. And yeah, so yeah, yeah we 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 had the deck either at about nineteen feet. Yeah. Yeah, and that worked out fine for us, and uh, things were going great, and I think we, I don't know if we could have done it. I mean, we might have been able to dismantle the scaffold and erect it two more times, and we might have been able to get it done by the end of Sunday night, <laughs> or Monday, but uh, calling in a friend of a friend, Joe, to come help out was... was yeah. So we got in a little bit over our heads or or we underestimated or we overestimated our skill or <laughs> underestimated the size of the tree. I'd like to say we underestimated the size of the tree. Yeah. yeah. So I also believe we could have taken the tree down in the weekend, it being a long weekend. Yeah. Uh, but we were working up against a power line, my house, uh, a fence, the neighbor's power line, 
and a public road. Yeah. Yeah, you had a power line basically that was right next to the tree. Yeah. And then yeah. your neighbor's power line was in the path of the fell if we dropped yeah. it. So that yeah. 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 And, and the person that was right on your fence line and yeah. it was also hanging over your house. Yeah. Or and it would go right into the street. <laughs> and hung over the road. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 It was just very uh, very, very uh, Precarious. That's the word I was looking for, but I couldn't think of it. Precarious placement. Yeah. Tree. How's that? Well, we could have taken it down, but uh, it would have been a, a great deal of effort. And a friend of mine who lives in town came by to take home some of the wood chips because we were chipping the wood as we were cutting the, cutting the branches off. And she mentioned that she knew uh, an arborist in town and thought that he could come and uh, for a couple hundred bucks help us take the tree down, which is a little underestimating the value of this gentleman's time. Yeah. But it ended up working out in our favor. So we gave him a call. His name was Joe. We gave him a call. He came. Uh, he gave me, I think, a reasonable price. Uh, to help take down the tree, and then uh, I knocked them down uh, another hundred bucks to, uh, I think, a bit more favorable. But it was still a good value, and uh, he, with our assisting him, we got the whole tree down to the ground in a day, a long day. It was dark when we were done. Yeah. But yeah, well, he, he. What time did he show up? Two or three kind of thing? Yeah, or afternoon. Yeah, two yeah, or three. Afternoon. Afternoon. So his time, he was only there for probably five, six hours. Of work. Yeah. Of work. Yeah, of running saws. Yeah. 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 And he also a... climbed up into the tree <laughs> and uh, had a much smaller physique <laughs> than us. He uh, was under six feet tall less than 200 pounds and was very nimble and agile you and i i'll come out on a i'll i'll, I'll suggest we're both over six foot and both over 200 pounds oh uh, yeah 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 barely uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah what surprised me andrew is he came over to give an estimate and we haggled on the prize and then when he agreed on the price, he started unloading this truck. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. I thought he was going to go home first, grab his stuff, but he literally yeah. just started unloading the stuff and he was ready to go. Within minutes of us agreeing to, to him, he was unloading equipment and he was throwing lines up in the tree, yeah. setting yeah. rope to, to start climbing. Yeah. Yeah. Although... I think it could. He said he was going slower. Uh, I don't know, because maybe he has to inexperience the guys on the ground. But I think we could have gone a little faster, too, if he had just um, trusted the strength of the guy behind the rope. <laughs> yes. So and, uh, he, did, uh, he, he did the work with the idea that uh, we would provide some ground support, some assistance to him. Uh, but I think he he underestimated or didn't understand uh, that although we are not arborists, uh, we are handy. Not 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have physical strength. Uh, we know our way around power equipment. Uh, we both have experience around safety and working at heights. Yeah. Background in scaffolding. So anyway... Uh, he, he, uh, he, he took the safer route, uh, whereas he could have uh, worked faster and we could easily have uh, kept up and, and, and gone a little quicker. Yeah. 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 And that's fine. I mean, I started slowing down towards the end of the day. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, my God, I tell you, my feet were just sore as all hell. They, it was, it's bad. My, my whole body was, was ready for the day to end but uh got it done yeah got it done yeah so the whole reason why the tree came down is i'm having solar 
panels installed on my roof. Yeah. Uh, in uh, preparation for someday having an electric vehicle. Which would be awesome. Yep. I'm very interested in that Tesla Cybertruck. Oh, that would be sweet, dude. <clears throat> I like I like it too. Uh, I, I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't mind having one as well. Yeah. Um, it, because I knew you were putting up solar panels and we were taking down the tree because that's was shading the whole side of your house. Every time we got a section down, I kept saying, oh, there's plenty of sun, Andrew, that you can do it. It's hoping that we would stop at it, but we didn't. We just kept going and going until there was three inches of stub left on the yeah. ground. But <laughs> we did it. We did it. Uh, so, so what's my, the next step of, step of your solar panels like? Well, uh, they are still working on the design and uh, I imagine the design portion is done, but they had to do an engineering evaluation of my roof. Uh, the main part of the house they feel is fine because it has a standard truss, but the addition to the house over the garage uh, the roof ridge, everything is built not to a truss. It's leaned up on each other, and they want to make sure that has the, the capacity to carry the weight of the solar panels, which aren't that much, but also um, meet the code requirements for wind sh uh, s s shearing force and loading for snow, because you know we do get some snow here. So they, they, they have to meet code requirements. So they're doing that evaluation of the, the garage portion of the roof. Uh, but they're also moving forward with uh, the net metering application with uh, our utility company up here, which is Portland General Electric. So part of my solar system will be a electric meter or a, a meter that will run forwards and backwards. So when I produce more electricity than I consume, my meter will run backwards and provide power onto the grid for my neighbors. And when I consume more power than I produce, my meter will run forward and I will take power off the grid. And when my meter runs backwards, the, the utility company will credit me uh, the kilowatts that I produce. So uh, for here in Oregon, the Pacific Northwest, we will have, I'll have great sun in the summer. I'll build up a surplus of credits. And then in the winter, I will consume those credits. So from a financial standpoint, it will keep my electric bill low. So, yeah. And you heat <clears throat> with wood stove. Yeah. Do you have any well, electric heat? Do you use electric heat at all during the winter time? Uh, I have an electric, uh, radiant heater for my shed, which I'm sitting in right now. And this last winter, I did not run it very much, but we also had a very mild winter. Mm -hmm. The winter before I had it on low setting and kept my shed uh, probably 50 degrees in the dead of winter, which was warm enough for me. You know, you put on a sweatshirt and work and you're, you're warm. Yeah. Uh, but my house uh, I leave my thermostat in the winter set to uh, 60 degrees. And then when I want my house warmer than 60, I, I heat with wood. And so that's natural gas. Okay. That's yeah. cool. But my, uh, my primary electrical consumption, my two biggest electrical consumers is a hot tub Ooh. and my welder. Yes. So, so when I look back at the history of my electricity <laughs> consumption, my welding projects, I see a huge spike <laughs> in electricity consumption. <laughs> so running a, a welder uh, is not uh, green. <laughs> it consumes a lot. Well, you're running at 220 as well. Like, yeah. yeah. You're even running more power to that sucker too yeah. than before. So. Uh, do you have multiple access panels to your attic space or do you just one. have one one so the garage and the house is connected together and yeah that's how they were able to look inside to find out yep yep you go up through the the 
the garage, there's a, a fold down kind of ship's ladder sort of thing. Oh, then, really? Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, you go up there. Um, and then my house is small, so you can see either end of the, the attic space. Really easy. Yep, cool. Let's and I need to do some insulation work up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've had both PGE and the solar panel company have come out now and inspected? Not, not PGE, not, not yet. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I've been approved for the net metering, but I saw the application get submitted to PGE, to the, to the utility company, yeah. And then um, I'll go after two sets of rebates, one federal and one state, and then there's some local ones too. Um, incentives basically to uh to go solar the federal one is a tax credit and if you have it installed and up and running within 2020 i think it's a 26 percent of the cost of installation you can claim as a credit and then it goes down next year and goes down the year after until it eventually disappears and then the state has a much smaller one um, but it's still enough to, to make it significant. So that my, the cost of my solar project is, will be offset by maybe 40-ish percent. So, which is pretty significant mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. Awesome, that's like exciting, <clears throat> that's exciting. Um, so what's in the works for you now? Are you sure. feeling, um, you want to get back to making some more videos now? Like, yeah, I do. I've, I've been, <laughs> remit, um, I've taken a break for lack of a better term. I've taken a break from making videos. I've put a couple out, um, a little bit of uh, your unboxing video, man. <laughs> With a wood chipper. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when I bought my wood chipper to take the tree down, I thought I'll just set this on a tripod, do it live, and have an impromptu unboxing. Mm -hmm. I set my phone up in the full sun, so my phone overheated and stopped broadcasting. Oh my gosh. And then when I, I took the phone down, put it in the shade, I thought I was done. I just thought it would stop broadcasting. And then I realized it started broadcasting. Again. Yeah, which I thought was weird. And then I was playing around with it. And then I dropped my phone in the broadcast and I'm picking it up. And so it's a <laughs> comedy of errors, quite possibly, one could say. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but I left it up. Yeah. Uh, people can go laugh at the at my. Hey man, a views of you, right? What a views of you, a views of you. Yep. Uh, but I have uh, some tool reviews I want to do. Uh, I uh, have a horizontal clamp. Uh, I'm trying to think of what it's called, a, a cross slide vise that I picked up from Harbor Freight. And I did a little tuning to it, and I got a little bit more tuning to do. Uh, and I attempted to do some milling on my stand-up drill press. And uh, found out uh, milling is uh, mathematically makes sense, but in uh, actual doing it, it's a bit more difficult than one would think. <laughs> And it doesn't take much to uh, mess up your project. Up. It's yeah. real easy to take material away. Yeah. But apparently very difficult to put that material back. It's weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're part. doing pottery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I want to give a little review of this uh, cross slide vice. Uh, 
I also figured out I shouldn't have my my um, hand up drill press on casters uh, because that moves ever so slightly moves around and you really need a, a little bit more stable base. Oh, yeah. I saw that. So you finally bolted it down to the ground. Yeah. So I took it off the casters and I made a, a riser so it would still be as high as what I had it on casters because I enjoy the, the height yeah. being elevated a little bit. Yeah. And then I also picked up a cyclone... Um, the shop vac shop vac attachment for mm. dust collection and uh i i frankensteined it together with uh an old fest tool vacuum i have and set it up with my um dewalt saw i picked up i got from you the um compound miter saw compound okay. miter saw, yeah. so when i cut wood it uh, automatically turns on sucks the chips up, the chips go in the cyclone and the fine dust goes in the fest tool. And you have a five gallon bucket, is that what it's a yeah. match to? It's sitting on a five gallon <laughs> bucket, yeah. So I wanna do a, a video review of that and oh. yeah. I actually have some other video material shot that I haven't edited that I, I might do something with or I might not. Yeah, I, I really want to get back into shooting video, sharing video, and uh, the community aspect from YouTube. I'm, I'm missing all the folks that um, I interact with. Yeah. Yeah, there's some good folks out there. Yeah. And I know there's going to be a lot of folks that'll be happy to see you again. Yes. Yeah. I might take this video, our practice, and turn it into a video yeah. of the channel. That'd be cool, you have my permission. Thank you. <laughs> I have two videos that I'm working on and I'm not sure which one's gonna come up first, but I've been working on this uh, old drafting table chair. I've been restoring it and I've uh, stripped down the paint because it was all rusted and I painted it and I put on new casters. <clears throat> but I got... Um, One of these, ArborTech, goes on your uh, right grinder. angle grinder. Yeah, yeah. It turns it into like a saw blade. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, so for those of you who are listening, Gary has gotten up out of his oh, chair and yes. wandered off screen. <laughs> I want to show what he's working on. Uh, my pallet wood chair that I'm oh. putting it together, and I took that ArborTech. So yeah. this is going to be the new seat for that chair I'm working on. And I've also am working on a, uh, a yard Yahtzee game. I think they're calling it Yahtzee. Oh. And I've seen them in the past and people have used four by four to make dice out of four by yeah. four. Yeah. Well, I had a big old chunk of six by six. So I'm making roughly it's five and a half inch dice. Yeah. Uh, into yard C and we're going to put it in a five gallon bucket so we can dump it on the, on the yard. So, but I'm not sure how I'm either going to uh, use my router and, and make a little inset for the dots. Yeah. Or I'm going to drill a hole and then put a different color dowel uh, to, to inlay a dowel for the dots of the dice too. I like the idea. Of, I like the idea of doing the router. Yeah, that's and then easier. you paint the inside. Yeah, yeah. My problem is, is out of the only five router blades that I own, I can find four of them, and one of them is the one that I need the three quarter inch uh, flat bit. <laughs> That'll do that. So I might have to go and get one. Yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Amazon or Harbor Freight? Yeah, probably Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> They'll pay twice as much if I go down to the local Ace Hardware. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm excited to get that gone. So Alex, my son Alex, he's 13, he wanted um, a dry erase board so he can just sketch and take yeah. pictures. And he was actually thinking about doing like a, a animation video with it, stop motion. 
So uh, his mom, my wife, Sarah, your sister, wow, you like that? <laughs> she bought like five or six of these uh, eight and a half by 11 small little, they were in a pack together on Amazon for 13 bucks or something like that, these little dry erase boards. So I'm gonna take three or four of those and I'm gonna permanently make a Yahtzee scoreboard, paint the numbers and, and the lines, and then you can use the dry erase marker to fill in your score when we play the Yahtzee. Or maybe I'll just only do two of them so I don't take most of them. Yeah. And then a, I'll, I'll find a way where you can put multiple players on one scorecard or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a great idea. I don't know. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of a time I once played Mondo Croquet. Yes. Where oh. they're your standard like four inch croquet balls and small wooden mallet. This <laughs> gentleman got bowling balls, rebar <laughs> wickets or rebar pieces for the, the hoops. And then we had uh, sledgehammers. Oh, that sounds awesome. I really wish I was yeah. there or had played that game. <clears throat> it's like fun. Yeah. So yeah, that'll get us out in the yard and it'll yep. give us a little more physical activity to, because yep. there's still six by six, they're heavier than a four by four. So it's going to take a little yeah. mus muscle to roll all five dies in a five gallon bucket. And it makes for a very clever and fun um, conversation. Yes. <laughs> and stories. Yeah. And since your son's a teenager, <laughs> uh, his buddies, he, they might think it's cool. Yeah, right? Maybe. We'll play Yardsea on his birthday one day. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he'll have a birthday party this year. No. September, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We actually don't one. even know if school is going to start in, in the fall or not. Yeah. No. Uh, for those of you in the future listening to the past, <laughs> uh, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic where uh, people are encouraged to shelter in place and not go out in public. Yeah. Things like public schools were closed, uh, gyms were closed, uh, many things were closed, and uh, people were discouraged from gathering. So uh, what he's talking about is maybe his son will not have a birthday party because we'll still be discouraging gatherings yep and maybe school won't even start <clears throat> in september because of that too so uh it is <clears throat> excuse me june 3rd 2020 yeah in case you're wondering future people i mean i guess everyone's going to be future people when they're listening to this right True. yeah we probably should have said the date it is june 3rd 2020 yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. hi that could be a lesson learned from this experience. Yes. Yeah, we could do the date. Uh, we could do, we, when we say the date, do we say the date of the day we're filming or the date that the day we know this is going to come out? If we filmed on a Tuesday and then we published on a Friday, do we say Friday's date? No, the date we record. Okay. Because there could be a major event happen between the date we record and the date we publish. And why in the hell did that guy start talking about that? Yeah. For yeah. Sure. You know, like uh, a volcano goes off and people are listening to our podcast and they go, that's weird. The volcano went off two days ago and these guys haven't mentioned it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Which could totally happen. We have a volcano here in Oregon. <laughs> An active yeah. one. We have multiple volcanoes. Multiple, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. So those of you listening on audio, the squeaking is Gary's chair and the crunching <laughs> are wheat bins. <laughs> yeah, it's my old chair. It squeaks. I'm hoping the new chair I put out is not going to squeak. And I think I'll actually put it in my wicker chair next time. I'll sit down and lounge a little more because my butt's starting to hurt a little in this chair. Yeah, I'm sitting on an old... Um, conference room chair or something that I got from you guys when you lived in oh, the chrome one the blue yeah the blue fabric yeah it's very uncomfortable yeah yeah they're very uncomfortable. 
what I should do is disassemble the seat and put a nice cushiony seat on it. <laughs> yes. Yes, you should. you should. And that could be a video. It could. It could. Hey, so it doesn't tell us anywhere here how long we've been Zooming mm -hmm. or recording. That's true. So another lesson, I guess, we'll have to figure out how to um, record the time, I guess. Yeah. Well, Whether it's looking at our, our watch and, and write it down or... Yeah, not the time. So I think this was a good experiment. What do you think, Gary? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think, <clears throat> I don't know what my audio sounds like, and I don't know what your audio sounds like, because my speakers kind of suck right now, uh, but I'll listen to it on my headphones, and uh, I will look for my USB mic for the future and see what else I can do about possibly having better audio. You know what's funny? I have these headphones on, and I'm not listening to anything through the headphones. You're coming through the speaker on my uh, laptop. Uh, not doing for anything. those of you that aren't watching the video, I'm <laughs> fix pumping myself. <laughs> ah, so, well, so another lesson learned. So how do I sound? Do I sound uh, louder now? Do I sound? You do better? sound better. You're not as muffled. I'm not muffled. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> That's awesome. <laughs> so cool. So. so how Gary, tell people what kind of social media you're Tell us about your social media and how people can find you. Oh, they can find the Bearded Woodworker uh, on Facebook and on Instagram. And I believe it's uh, I am the Bearded Woodworker on Facebook and on Instagram. It's just the Bearded Woodworker. I'll put some links in the uh, notes of the video. Yes. If cool. this ever gets published to um, a podcast realm or podcast podcast publisher, I don't know how to do that. So there may or may not be links. <laughs> yes. Okay. Then on YouTube, there's not a link. Also look for me on YouTube. YouTube.com. The Bearded Woodworker. Yes, and I am I am the Bearded Giant on Instagram and the Bearded Giant on YouTube. And I will put links to both those in the video below and you can find me there. I highly recommend you check out Gary. I uh, highly recommend you check out Andrews. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> blush, blush, blush. Uh, so that's it. Let's wrap it up. Gary, cool. thank you. Yes. Have a good day, man. Yes, you too. Thank you guys for listening. If there's anyone there listening, Andrew, catch you on the next one. Catch you on the next one. Peace out. All right. Bye, guys. See there. No, down, down. Right there. Right. Oh, that looks good.